When it comes to the concept of Trinity, there are lots of questions and uh, let's discuss them. Before we take the very word Trinity, let me clear two doubts or apprehensions a lot of people have. One is regarding the word one. A lot of people think that one, the word one has only one meaning, but as a number, but it also has a, a different meaning. Now let's look at it. For that, I will illustrate it through an example. For example, four guys, just imagine they went out to play and after some time, one of them comes back completely bruised and you ask him what happened. He goes on explaining like this, the other three became one and they beat me up. Now when he uses the word became one, what does he mean? He means there are three individuals, they became one unit and they put him down. So that's the other meaning of the word one. So when the Bible uses that word one, it uses this concept. You have this concept explained in two differences. One is in Genesis chapter two, verse 24. They will become one, two individuals becoming one. The second example I want to quote is about the producer and the product. You know that whatever is there in the product, it should be there in the producer, the integral part of the producer. For example, your cell phone gives five plus two is equal to seven because the producer who made it, he got seven when he added those two numbers. Now, when I'm using that example, what I mean is this, as human beings, we have two important concepts. One is the concept of communication. We communicate with each other. And where from we got this? Definitely we got this from our producer. Communication can be there only when there are two different elements. The second one I'm referring is about love. We all have the craving for love and we want to love. And where from we got this attribute of love? It's again from the producer. Love can exist only when there are more than uh, one being. Therefore, God has to be plural for these attributes to exist in him in eternity and that's where we have to understand the plurality in the divine essence and that's what we are going to discuss further. Now it is a logical necessity that in divine aspect there must be a plurality for love to exist and for communication to exist. For God to be almighty, for God to be omni, he has to be one unit. That's what the Bible brings in. So logically speaking, God has to, in, in divine ele element, there must be plurality. But when we look into the Bible, it is very much evident that the, in this divine element, there are three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. All these three are equally divine equally omniscient and equal in status and they came up together and they formed into one unity called Trinity. Definitely Trinity is not the word that is found in the Bible but the concept is very much prevalent in the Bible. Now what is the advantage of having this concept of Trinity? Because we have the concept of Trinity, now look at it. God the Father loved and God the Son died for us and God the Holy Spirit applies that salvation concept to human beings. We pray to God the Father, we pray in the name of the Son, we pray with the help of the Holy Spirit. So the triune God is involved in our salvation, the triune God is involved in our daily growth. So our God is a triune God.